Hello everyone and welcome back to the part fifth of my tutorial series on vector database where we are using a fine phone database. In today's video, we are going to tackle a super relevant use case where we are going to extract a meaningful data from the PDF file. Because if you just see the real time, most of the data which we fed to the AI system or intelligent system, we most of the time uses PDFs, right? So PDF is one of the most important and widely used source and we have to understand how we can extract the data from PDF, convert the embedding based on the index dimension and then upload to the vector database and just pick any intelligent system like which you can see on my screen like chat with PDF, search a compliance document, making your compliance process more intelligent, internal knowledge boards, power customer service tools, document service system, question and answering system, right? So, so without further delay, let's get into the coding. But before you continue with this video, I would highly recommend you to watch my previous video if you haven't watched so far, because in last four part, we have covered all the basics related to the vector database and what all entities we can create and deal with the Python code. Okay, even if you don't want to watch it and if you have that basic knowledge, it's still you can follow along with this video because we are going to write all the code from the very basic. So just to save time, this is a very basic fundamental, uh, you know, code we need where we are just importing all the relevant library like Pinecone, which is the Python client. And since we are going to extract the data from the PDF, so we need a library through which we can read the PDF and extract the data. And for that, which library can be uh, the better than by PDF? We have a lot of other libraries, whatever you used in your past, you can use that as well with a similar concept. So to install that, since it's a Python library, we all need, we all know that this is just a install and the link. Since it is already installed, so just give me a requirement selection. Other few library which I just needed, like I mean UUID, and I'm, I'm gonna explain why do we need it. And then again, we are just loading an environment file, creating a pipe pine phone uh, client, and then these are the some parameters which we will be needing. And we are not creating a tutorial index here because this we have already created in part second, so we are just utilizing the same index, right? And here we have just made the connection to our index, right? Now. So what we next we have to do, we have to just extract the data from the PDF. And for that, what I have done is I have derived this simple function, which I can copy paste here. It's very straightforward. All it needs three parameters. The first one is the PDF part and the chunk size and the overlap. And that part is where I'm going to explain what is chunk size and what is overlap and why do we need it. This part is very standard. If you just go to the PY PDF library, you will find that, you know, uh, this is the simple syntax where you have to just finish like by feeding in the PDF file part where your PDF is lying and you have to give it to the PDF reader class. And then you will get this reader object. And once you have this reader object, this has a call pages where it have all the pages information. You can just see that if you want to print it, you can just print out that and you can get it. And it's a list so that we can just iterate through the pages. And then inside the page, we have this function, which is extract underscore text. We just extract all the text. You know, if it is there, then it is going to accept that. Otherwise, it is defaulted to space. And now it is joining with the next big one. Right, so we are just getting the entire full text, which is already self-explanatory code. And then we are just splitting out to just convert the entire text into the words. And here we are just, you know, printing on the words. If you want to get into the specific uh, values, like I mean, pages and all the stuff, you can just print that out and you can just see by yourself. Now come to the part of chunk size and overlap. Why do we need it, right? So words. Once we have a word, we are just ranging through. So basically we are just trading through. Here, the starting point is zero. The end is gonna be the total length of word. This, this is what we want. We want the entire words to create a chunk for us. Then the, then the next is actually the size of the chunk which we're gonna have. So what we are doing, we are saying chunk size minus over. So it, what does it mean? It means that let's assume this word is having some numbers, for example, 2,500 words, right? So what this chunk is going to do is it is going to be 250, right? So 300 minus 50. So it will start from zero, right? And what it's going to do, it will just take that 250 words. 
right? And then, you know, it will just extract that size. So zero plus 250, and next extract, this would be 250 plus 250, right? That which is 250 plus 300, which is gonna be 550. So this is just a standard Python code where you are just extracting the number of words based on the value which you have here. Right, and then you will be having a chunk, and we are just checking simply if you know the chunk size is greater than twenty, then only we are going to append that, right? And then we are going to. So basically, what we are saying is, if you know our chunk size is you know uh, less, it's is greater than twenty, then only we are going to create a new chunk with it, right? And so that's okay, right? So we are just ignoring that. So it's. Simply depends upon what kind of logic you want to write, in which way you want. Then we have a chunk. So basically, we have just extracted the text, converted into words, and then we have just put a limit where you know we say that we only need a 250 words. With overlap, what's gonna happen, right? So first chunk is gonna have, let's assume, a 250 words. The next one, again, it's gonna have a 250 words. But overlap means what it's gonna take. It's going to take our 50 words from the previous chunk, which we are going to see when we are just going to print this up, right? So let me just run with this file. And then we can just quickly verify whether it is just overlapping the 50 or not, right? So here what I have done, I have a bunch of, uh, you know, PDF file, which I put it in this folder, which is this compliance application with doc. And this is one of the document right text says, and we can say open that. Understanding, this is how it looks like. So it is just having some understanding about how the right text software as a service platform looks like, you know, it's having some information about it, right? So, okay. And uh, then we come back here and see what we can get. So we are just extracting the data and creating a chunk size. So let's see if we can get that. Once this part is done, then we are going to go ahead and create the value. Okay, cool. Right, so now we can see all the words. You know, if you want, you can see by page by space, if you want. Then we have this, right? This is my first chunk. Okay, and if you just see here what it's doing, different data types, right? So if you just see here where we have the different data types, here we can see this, right? So until this point, these are the 50 words, which are just, you know, so we have this overlap. In our next chunk, we have this overlap, right? But the pro this is having a problem, I know, because uh, it, it is in between, right? Sentence in between, sometimes the previous sentence is not done. But this way is not the intelligent way how in real time PDF data get instructed. That is something which we want to cover in our next. But right now, I just wanted to showcase the possibility that we can extract the data have some kind of our own chunking rule, and then we can do that. One, whatever the weakness this strategy is having, in the next video, we're gonna use some NLP related library to make this chunking process more intelligent. But right now, we have to just understand the end to end process where we should be able to not only extract the data from the PDF, convert into the embedding, and upload to the vector database, right? So we have seen this chunk and now I'm just gonna copy the next piece of code which I have written where we are going to generate the embedding. And this embedding is pretty much straightforward what we have learned so far, but here we have, here I have had some uh, more metadata related stuff. So if you just see embedding is pretty much same, right? We are using the same inference API with embed and here the same embedding model you know, which is in our case, uh, you know, multilingual unified large, you can use anyone, whatever you feel like. Parameters again, same. Here, rather than giving, uh, you know, the text which we were giving previously, now we are directly saying the chunks, so list of a text, basically. So we are just giving, the, because we are giving a list of our chunks, right? So we just feed it in that. And then we will have our embeddings, right? Same logic, right? We are creating a vectors out of that embedding. So what we are doing, whatever the chunk we have, and then we have an embedding. So this is the same way what we had done in our previous uh, previous two previous video, and this is the part three where we understand the embedding, right? So here, the an interesting part, since we don't have an ID, so I'm using a UUID4 uh, method to just get the UUID4, which is going to be a unique ID, and I'm just converting it to the string, and that's the reason we have this UUID. Then again, embedding values, which is straightforward. Now here in metadata, the text is chunk, Right, so I'm just, there we have a text, but now we wanted to have a chunk, the complete chunk. Source, we are just saying, I mean, which file we are using, right? And then we have a document, and then we have our type is PDF. So category, type, and source, whatever you want, you can keep adding to this, right? 
So it's very straightforward. The next thing is what we're going to do is we are going to observe that, right? So before observing it, we are just checking the uh, index and then afterwards also we are going to check the index, right? It's again very simple, same logic, absurd, power providing a vectors and the names. Same so we're going to use. Okay, so have a wait time so that you know the data will get reflected. Okay, okay so I'm running the same code again. This is our chunk. Okay, so now we have a total vector count 26. Uploaded one vectors, you know, two vectors. Mm -hmm. So now we can see the vector count is keep adding. So eventually we have 30. So we started with 26, we have 30. So basically we have four chunks which we have loaded and we can check how many chunks we have here, right? So the first one, the second, the third and the fourth, right? So we have four chunk and we can see now the four, all the four chunks have been uploaded. So basically whatever the data we have in a PDF, we are able to upload that data into the index, right? Which is the good, right? Here, the only thing is what we are doing here is we are just upsetting the vectors one by one. Why? That's the reason that logic is not good. Oh, right, so I will have Okay. Since you know our ID is always different, that's the reason whenever we are going to run this code, it's always gonna have a new record added because the ID is always gonna be unique, right? So now we have 30 and now it's completely waiting because last time because we were running in that for loop, that's the reason you know it was not shown. So if you have to run the one more time, we should be having. seems like uh you know it's just checking the vector representation and if the vector representation is same then it's not adding anything so what we can do we can now choose a different the another PDF file okay so i'm gonna replace that here okay so let's do this Okay, so now we are getting our different data. Now we can see 38. Okay, 42. Okay, so I think at that point of time, it's not verifying the vector. It's actually just depending upon our ID only. So now we can see that it was a little slow because now we have a more uh, text rather than having a very simple text, right? So this is how we can just read the PDF, get the data out of it, and we can upload that. The only weakness with this current approach is, uh, since we are just having this hard-coded rule where we are saying, okay, we just need a 250 words with a 50 words overlap from the previous channel. But this is not the intelligent way of doing it, you know? So now what we are gonna do in the next video, we are going to make this entire logic more intelligent where we are going to use a natural language processing a library to make this all more intelligent. And in the next to next one, we are going to do some LLMs to just make this chunking more intelligent. So that's it from my side for this particular video. And if you have any feedback or suggestion, please feel free to put that in the comment section. And if you really like this video, please give a thumbs up. And if you want to share this with your friends and group where you feel that it will be helpful for them, please do share. And if you haven't subscribed for my channel, please subscribe. As always, thanks for watching this. Stay healthy and keep learning.